Okay, so let's um, begin the process of getting finite answers in quantum field theory for uh, various observables. And as I had mentioned earlier, this procedure is called renormalization. Okay, so let me briefly summarize what we have done so far. So we have seen that the integrals diverge the moment you go to one loop. Okay, and uh, we have also seen using dimensional regularization how exactly these uh, divergences appear, these ultraviolet divergences appear in, in the theory. Okay, and we have seen that we get simple poles at one loop in four dimensions. As you approach four dimensions, you get simple poles. In epsilon, okay, where you take d equal to four minus two epsilon and let epsilon goes to zero. So now our next step is to build the dimensional continuation, which we did for the integrals, directly into the Feynman rules. Okay, that's what we want to do now. But none of this is going to solve any of our problems uh, as such. But what it will do is it will make it easier to or more systematic to um, to understand uh, the, the singularities. Okay, what kind of singularities will appear in a more systematic manner rather than just looking at the individual Feynman diagrams. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And as I said, this is not going to make anything finite because I have to take epsilon going to zero eventually, meaning I should work in four dimensions and all those integrals will diverge. Okay, But nevertheless, this will be the first step towards our uh, goal of getting finite answers. Okay, So let's begin with that. So again, my um, all the work that I'll do will be in the in the 5 4 theory whose action is this d4x um, half del mu phi del mu phi minus half m square phi square minus lambda over 4 factorial phi to the 4. Okay, but now I want to use a different action, not this one, which will be. Uh, given by this. So instead of working with this, with this, this action we work with the following. So I will work instead with integral d dx. Okay, I am going to d number of space time dimensions okay and you have again half del mu phi del mu phi that will not change because after all this is what this is what this is d0 phi d0 phi uh, plus d1 phi d1 phi plus d2 phi d2 phi and so forth and if you have d number of them let's say d is integer then it is just have just have more number of terms right so it will have d0 phi d0 phi d1 d1 d2 d2 and so forth up to d d minus 1 phi d d minus 1 phi okay but i'm going to view it not as a, a d as an integer but i will let it uh, even take uh, fractional values okay but we will not worry so much about what exactly it means to have d as fractional okay and uh, worry about those details our aim will be just to get Feynman rules which are valid and eventually which give integrals which are of this form. So instead of getting integrals of this form, I will start getting integrals directly of um, these forms, like these ones, okay, here, which are already continued. So that's, that's all we are trying right now. Okay, and uh, I'm not trying to uh, worry about what it means to have an action in 
fraction number of dimensions okay or, or even um, yeah so um, let me write it as minus half instead of m i will write m prime so m prime square phi square minus lambda over 4 factorial lambda prime over 4 factorial phi to the 4 okay i have just renamed m to m prime and lambda to lambda prime okay okay so i want to work with this integral and now this is in four dimension uh, instead instead of four dimensions it is in d dimensions so let's do the first simplest exercise of checking the mass dimensions of the fields and the and these mass parameter and and the coupling constant that appear here okay and uh, remember to do that to uh, we should remember that s has dimensions of h bar or h planck's constant okay they have the same dimension if you check uh, look at action okay and convince yourself that action has mass dimensions of this constant h if you have not already done so then because we are in natural units in which h bar is 1 also c is 1 it means that because h bar is 1 a number it's a dimensionless subject okay in these units then action is dimensionless meaning the mass dimension of s is 0 okay it's m power 0 okay so now let's determine the mass dimension of m prime and lambda prime and phi now i cannot start that exercise from this term or this term okay because here there are two objects whose mass dimensions are not determined i have phi i don't know what's the mass dimension of that okay because now i'm in d dimension the mass dimension of phi what it used to be in four dimension is not going to be true and also in this term i have another factor m prime square so i cannot disentangle uh, from from here the mass dimension of phi and mass dimension of m separately okay so i should go to a term in which i do not have this issue and which is this one first term okay there is only field phi for which i need to figure out the mass dimension because the dimension of del mu is known del mu is just a derivative with respect to a particular coordinate so that its dimension will be 1 so this i know okay d dx the mass dimension of that will be minus d right because you have dx 0 dx 1 dx 2 so and so forth dx and sorry d minus 1 okay so they are each of them has a mass dimension of minus 1 so the total mass dimension will be minus d okay so this has minus d del mu has 1 so minus d plus for this it is 1 for that it is 1 so 2 or uh, 2 plus mass dimension of phi but there are two such factors so 2 times of it and that all should add up to 0 because action is dimensionless so each term should be dimensionless so what does that give that gives um, d is equal to sorry mass dimension of phi is equal to d minus 2 over 2 that that is what in general case but for us because we are taking d equal to 4 minus 2 epsilon okay so 2 over 4 over 2 is 2 minus yeah correct so 4 over 2 is 2 minus epsilon and then you have minus 1 coming from here minus 1 so this is 1 minus epsilon okay so that's the mass dimension of phi let us now find out the mass dimension of m so again the same exercise um, m prime sorry this you will um, find that this is 1 okay, let's check how so 
mass dimension of phi. So, phi square he is here. So, it will be uh, d minus 2 over 2. Okay. And uh, sorry, d minus 2 because 2 factors. Okay. So, uh, d minus 2 over 2 is for each phi. So, 2 times of it. So, it is d minus 2. And you have a minus d. Okay. So, let us write down there. Um, d dx you have and then you have m prime square and then you have phi square okay so this is giving you d minus 2 that gives you minus d and this is 2 times of m prime and that should add up to 0 and you see that m prime has dimensions of mass so it's 1 okay from this m prime is 1 mass dimension of m prime is 1 okay and let's now look at lambda prime remember lambda prime or equivalently lambda in four dimension it used to be dimensionless okay let's see what happens when you go to d dimensions whether lambda prime is still dimensionless okay so again d dx so it gives you minus d plus lambda prime dimension of lambda prime plus phi to the four so four times d minus 2 over 2 okay because each of phi has dimension d minus 2 over 2 from here okay so what does that give um, this gives lambda prime 4d over 2 is 2d 2d minus d is d and this is minus 4 or lambda prime is equal to 4 minus d okay so as you see this is correct because if d is 4 then you get 4 minus 4 0 so lambda prime becomes dimensionless in 4 dimension which is something you already knew okay and this in 4 minus 2 epsilon dimensions becomes two epsilon okay so lambda prime has dimensions two epsilon let me record all this here phi has dimension 1 minus epsilon um, m prime has dimension 1 that did not change from 4 dimension it is still the same lambda prime has dimension 2 epsilon ok. So, what I will do now is I will redefine I will um, just a second I will um, redefine this lambda prime such that um, in this way a lambda prime I will call it mu to the 2 epsilon times lambda okay, so that is how I want to uh, write lambda prime. So, this, this is basically defining lambda mu is some arbitrary mass scale. Okay. So, what is the benefit? By doing this lambda becomes dimensionless right because if you look at the mass dimension of lambda prime this is mass to the power 2 epsilon. So, when you take it on the right hand side the mass dimension of this mass dimension of mu will be uh, uh, mu to the 2 epsilon will be 2 epsilon and because now the mass dimension of left hand side is already uh, taken care of by this the factor the factor mu to the 2 epsilon lambda is dimensionless ok. And uh, also note that mu is completely arbitrary this is this has no relation with any of the physical scales um, in any problem ok which you are doing because here mu, the purpose of mu is just to absorb the mass dimension of lambda prime ok. So, that I can have lambda to be uh, dimension this. Also, I will instead of calling m prime, I will call it m. Okay. The reason I put m prime in the beginning because I wanted to check what is the mass dimension and if it also had some, it has changed its mass dimension then I would have 
similarly introduce some some scale okay a mass scale but because it turned out to be again having the same mass dimension as before i am not changing it okay so um so that's the uh, notation i want to use now so i will write these uh, that action using these lambda and m so my action becomes integral ddx half del mu phi del mu phi minus half m square phi square minus mu to the 2 epsilon lambda over 4 factorial phi to the 4 okay that is the action with which I want to work okay and remember lambda is dimensionless now okay so I will just write this here okay now um, some time back in I think in the previous course probably I had um, I had told you that we can change the we can redefine the fields okay there is nothing uh, secret about half del mu phi del mu phi even the factor half here right this factor half you could absorb into phi you could say I do not want to work with this phi but I will work I will define half phi to be let us say phi prime and I will write this action as uh, del mu phi prime del mu phi prime and that half factor will start appearing in, in this in these pieces okay that is something you could do and we also had introduced some factor of z and redefined. So, what I am going to do now is I am going to redefine the fields and these parameters again okay and you will see later why that will be useful but for now I will do this okay. So, let us define phi to be z phi to the half okay times phi r and m to be z m times m r and lambda to be z lambda times lambda r okay where phi r m r and lambda r are are the fields which are um, which are finite and these z's uh, uh, they are um, so z i where i is phi m or lambda is of this form 1 plus um, let us call it z i prime ok where z i prime starts at order lambda ok. So, I am saying that instead of working with phi I want to work with phi r ok and here is some uh, change in the normalization of the field ok. I am just changing the normalizations of the field and of these m's and lambdas and I have introduced these uh, factors ok and I say that these factors are of this form 1 plus z i prime okay like z m is 1 plus z m prime and where the property z m prime has is that it starts at order lambda okay, it does not have a order 1 term it starts at order lambda okay it will be lambda times something plus lambda square times something and so forth okay. So, that is the uh, that is the redefinition I do and these constants z phi z m and z lambda sorry these are called renormalization constants ok and these z's are functions of lambda 
and m okay and because lambda is a function of lambda r okay m is a function of lambda uh, because there is a factor of zm zm depends on lambda and m but lambda is a function of lambda r m is a function of mr so all these zis are basically functions of lambda r and mr right because of these relations okay an important point is that zi is one per plus order lambda r terms okay so here i said zi prime starts at order lambda but now because lambda itself starts at order lambda r okay because lambda r times z lambda and z lambda is 1 plus something so this statement then becomes z i prime starts at order lambda r okay because of this this relation so all these uh, renormalization constants are actually functions of lambda r and mr okay the way i have defined all this so um also another thing i should tell you that this the way i have written uh, the redefined these fields you will see soon the nature of these zs that they are going to absorb infinities okay and uh, we'll see what all, all this means after we have done the calculation okay it's easier to appreciate once the calculation has been done we, when you have seen everything explicitly then uh, one understands why this has worked or what is the meaning of doing all this okay beforehand it's a bit difficult to appreciate so um yeah one thing i wanted to say here is that this is called multiplicative renormalization okay when you have this couple um, renormalization constants multiplying the renormalized fields okay when i when i'm using subscript r okay to a field or a parameter i call it as a renormalized field so phi r m r and lambda r these are renormalized fields and uh, parameters whether it's a mass parameter or a coupling constant okay and this uh, because this is multiplicative the z factors are multiplying the phi r's this is called multiplicative renormalization Yeah, I should have used some color. Okay, so this is multiplicative renormalization. These are renormalization constants, and these fields and mass parameters. These are called renormalized fields and renormalized mass parameter and renormalized coupling constant. okay so good i have said a lot of things here but mostly it is just redefining something okay now whether all this will be useful or not we have to see later but no one can stop me from doing what i have done just now okay you cannot there is no way you can stop me from saying that you this is not allowed you, you cannot say that i cannot write phi as z uh phi half times phi r okay because this is allowed i can redefine the field similarly mass parameter i can write it as a product of these two okay where zm is some constant okay and z lambda is some constant i can write it this way okay so if you cannot stop not because you are not physically present here to stop me but because there is nothing inconsistent that i am doing so i am allowed to do this Okay so let me put this back into the action and see how the action looks like okay but it's still the same action okay this action i'm not going to change anything is the same action i rewrite differently okay um, so as the action becomes the same action 
the same theory now looks like uh, the following half um, z phi to the half times phi r uh, del mu phi r okay again there is a del mu phi r and that also brings a factor of root z square root of z and those two square roots of z make z phi okay so that's first term um, then you have the mass term and that becomes minus half we had um, m square so and also phi r square so let sorry phi square so phi r uh, phi when i write in terms of phi r it becomes phi r square and it will bring bring a factor of z phi okay so that is what i'm writing here then you have m square and when you write it in terms of m r square it will bring a factor of z m square okay because z m times m r is what is m so the square of it gives you z m square m r square okay then you have minus uh, sorry minus 1 over 4 factorial it's I stopped writing now mu to the 2 epsilon okay then you can check that you get z lambda it's not writing why um, z lambda times z phi oh. square times lambda r times phi r to the 4 okay let's check whether this is correct because you have you had phi to the 4 okay it will bring uh, 4 powers of square root of z phi that makes z square and then we had lambda uh, here and that brings z lambda and this is mu to the 2 epsilon which was present and minus 1 over 4 factorial Okay, so that is how the action looks like now for the same theory. The physical content has not been changed. Okay, it's all the same. I have just redefined fields, but that doesn't change the content of of the theory. Meaning, if if you were um, calculating some observable earlier using S, uh, and you do it again, you will get the same result. The only thing is that earlier you will get a, you were getting nothing because you are getting infinities now also it's the same so you still don't get anything uh, sensible but as far as the theory is concerned it's the same theory okay so now um, this does not look like what we are used to so i will now add and subtract the following to this section okay add and subtract the same thing so that I do not alter the action. So, add and subtract half del mu phi r del mu phi r minus half m r square phi r square. Okay? So, this is something in terms of uh, the renormalized fields and renormalized mass parameter. Okay? So, I will just add and subtract this to the Lagrangian density and my action will become the following. So, S is integral d d x. So, I am adding now first half del mu phi r del mu phi r minus half m r square phi r square. Okay. Now, I should subtract this from this action, right? So, that it means that I have not done anything. I have not altered anything in the action. So, when I do so, I will get the following terms. So, I will write this half z phi del mu phi r del mu phi r and subtract from it half del mu phi r del mu phi r. 
which will give me half z phi so that is the term which is present and from when I'm subtracting this this gives a minus 1 del mu phi um, it's not. del mu um, phi oh, the laptop has slowed down suddenly Why? okay anyway okay let's check whether this is correct so you have here if you take this first term and this term and add them up what do you get because of this minus one this this term cancels okay and you are left with only half z phi del mu phi r del mu phi r which is what you had originally okay which means that i have not changed the first term as as i've written here okay now let's look at uh, minus half m r square phi r square term that i have added so i should subtract it and i'll subtract it from here so minus half okay looks like cannot write at all minus half um, let me try again z phi z m square minus 1 okay m r square i just want to finish this action it's not letting me m r square phi r square okay so let's check whether this is fine again minus half times minus one is half so half m r square phi r square Okay, with the plus sign that cancels against this one. Okay, so that I get rid of. And what is left with this? What is left is half z phi z m square, z half z phi z m square with the minus sign m r square phi r square. So that is also correct. Now let me write down the last term minus mu to the 2 epsilon. Okay, then you have lambda r over 4 factorial. What happened suddenly? Or 4 factorial, and then um, z of lambda, z of phi square. minus 1 you can check that uh, this is the right factor and phi r to the 4 this is difficult oh my goodness okay so finally I managed to write this okay so that is how um, the same action which I wrote earlier in terms of phi is, looks like when I write in terms of phi r. Okay. Now let me tell you why I have done this before I proceed further and anyway I cannot proceed further in this video because I am unable to uh, write at all. So see uh, the way it was written here in this, uh, in this in the, on the top here. Okay, now it works. Okay, this is working now. Something I should close. Okay, so the way uh, it was written here in uh, the the way the action was written on the top had del mu phi r del mu phi r that's the usual kinetic term, but then you have a z phi. But z phi is a function of lambda r and m r, 
which are your constants okay so i don't want to put it this way but i want to put it in the canonical form the way usually we write the kinetic term without coupling constants okay and that's why i have written written it this way because once i write it this way my the, the propagator in the theory will be exactly the same which i had earlier okay instead of m i will have mr but other than that everything looks the same so that's why i have um, added and subtracted that term so that i in the in the in the action i have the the parts for the free part uh, the parts which were present earlier okay I, i think i missed this one so not only add and subtract this i also wanted to add this one this one i forgot okay so you see that i have added and subtracted the entire uh, action that we used to have the only difference is that instead of phi i have phi r but it looks exactly the same okay so here also okay which is good because when i am writing the feynman rules i will have exactly the same feynman rules with the only uh, difference being that the names would have changed for the parameters and mu to the 2 epsilon will appear in the in the in the vertex but other than that everything is the same and there is another difference that will come here is you have more terms so you have more vertices okay let's look at this uh, this term okay this has z phi z phi starts with 1 so that one cancels one and it is left with z phi prime which i had earlier defined okay which starts at lambda or lambda r so this term would uh, would contain a a factor of lambda so that's a coupling term right this is a kinetic term here it does not contain any factors of coupling but here it does so that's a coupling term uh, that's a that's a interaction term Okay, which has derivatives here but it's a still an interaction term similarly this one okay this is also quadratic like this one the this term but again it contains factors of coupling okay coupling constant lambda r and that is why this is also a interaction term and the same is true for this one also okay because you have factors of lambda and anyway this is not even quadratic that is quartic so that's also a, a coupling term okay so uh, compared to the uh, theory written in terms of phi and m and lambda this has more number of vertices in the theory okay more number of interaction terms in the theory so now i'll give you the feynman rules and you can immediately see that these are the correct ones um so uh, let's first let's write down let us write down the propagator maybe i should okay let me take it to the next page toolbar come on c and what happened Okay, here, and then here I will just paste it. I hope that this will be also easily visible. Okay.
so that's how the action looks like now okay so what are the Feynman rules then um, Feynman rules or maybe I'll okay now I cannot move it so Feynman rules Remember, it's still the same theory. I haven't changed really anything. Okay, physics, physical content, everything is the same. Redefining certain things will cannot change the physics content. So, how about the propagator? Okay. Propagator is given by these first two quadratic terms. And this is of exactly the same form as before. So I also get the same thing as before. But now it will be MR square. Okay. And remember MR is still a mass parameter. Okay, it's not a physical mass of anything. Because you remember how we find the physical mass in a of particles in a theory. Uh, you can look at the poles of um, Green's functions or let us say two point function okay, and look at the pole and that pole will give you the physical mass. That, that physical mass will be a function of lambda and r uh, sorry lambda and m which in our case now has become have become functions of m r and lambda r. So, physical mass will be a function of m r and lambda r. Okay, So, m p would be mp's physical mass will be some function of mr and lambda r okay that is what we can say but mr is not itself the physical mass okay so that's one of the Feynman rules then as before we have this vertex coming from minus lambda r over 4 factorial phi to the r but you have a factor of mu to the 2 epsilon also and remember the Recall that the, the vertex here was minus i lambda over 4 factorial earlier that is what we had minus i lambda over 4 factorial. So, instead of lambda I will have lambda r okay? and I also have factor of mu to the 2 epsilon okay? which is basically um, i times minus lambda r over 4 factorial mu to the 2 epsilon. Okay. So, you see that minus lambda r over 4 factorial is this minus lambda r over 4 factorial and there is a factor of i. Okay. If you go back to the first course, you will see how this factor of i came out okay. uh, in the Green's functions because we had written everything uh, in terms of um, um, uh, how do you say vacuum expectation values of um, fields and then there was an exponential and e to the i of that interaction uh, term and that is from where the i was coming okay when you expand the exponential so it is that i but now uh, unlike the fact that you had only this term in the expression of Green's function, okay, you also have these terms, okay. So which means that you, these will also give you vertices. So let's look at this, these two terms now. There are two terms in this line, so let's take both of them. And del mu phi r, del mu phi r, that will give you a factor of p square, okay. When you take the derivatives, um, it pulls out factors of uh, I p. Okay. So, you will get the following. So, this uh, vertex I am drawing it this way because it has um, only two fields phi is that appear phi r and phi r. Okay. And so, it has two external lines this one also has phi square. So, two external lines okay. and you get um, I times half z phi minus 1 p square minus half z phi sorry 
z m square minus 1 m r square. Let me check. Okay, looks fine. Now z5, z m square minus 1 m r square. Okay, so you see you have in this theory. I mean, it's the same theory, but the way we have rewritten things, you also have a vertex which is a two-point vertex. Okay, we never had such a vertex before. We always had a four-point or a three-point vertex, but it's the first time we are seeing a two-point vertex, and these are usually denoted by putting a cross. Okay, so all those vertices in this action, uh, which carry a factors of z, okay, or z m or whatever, they will be denoted by this cross. By putting a cross on the on the on the vertex, and there is one more that you have, which is a four four point vertex coming from this last line, okay. And I put a cross because this also has factors of z's, and that's a four point vertex because you have four fields, okay. So four four lines you can connect. That's why it has four uh, four legs. So this is e to the sorry. I minus I times two epsilon um, lambda R over four factorial times Z lambda Z phi square minus one. Okay, so these are our Feynman rules with which we should work, and remember we have a we always have. Uh, momentum conservation at del at each vertex when we are drawing Feynman diagrams, and that momentum conservation is now d-dimensional. Okay, so it's really two pi to the d and delta d uh, and the sum of all uh, momenta that are entering into that vertex. Okay, so that's the only uh, other thing that you have to keep in mind. Now. Uh, given that we have these Feynman rules, let's first figure out whether these three new vertices, or sorry, these two new vertices, they are of the same order as the four-point vertex here, or or are they different? So this one, this vertex, is of order lambda, lambda r. Okay. So um, how do I do that? So th this vertex. Is of order lambda r. Okay. Now let's look at this one. This vertex has um, z phi, and this term. Let's look at z phi. So z phi is one plus z prime phi. Okay, or whatever. One plus one plus some function that starts at order lambda r. So, that one cancels and whatever you have here starts at order lambda r. Okay. So, this two point function clearly starts at order lambda r. Uh, sorry, this two point vertex not two point function. So, this is also a vertex that is of order lambda r. Now, let us look at this four point vertex which we have in this uh, way of writing. Here it already has an explicit factor of lambda r, right? Because you have a factor of lambda r here. Then z lambda and z phi they start at order one. So z lambda z phi square, the lowest order term in this will be one. So what that one will cancel this one, okay? And the second term, the next term in these will be of order lambda, lambda r, okay? So you see that this factor contributes something of order lambda r. Okay, that order lambda r term times this lambda r makes this vertex order lambda square. Order lambda r square. Okay, so this is a vertex that is of higher order compared to these two vertices. So if you are calculating something only up to order lambda r, then you don't need to use this last vertex because that contributes at order lambda r square. Okay, so one has to be also careful in using uh, this. Because these are of different orders. Okay, now we have all these Feynman rules, and uh, we have modified 
or redefine the fields in terms of renormalized fields and renormalized mass parameter and renormalized coupling constant. Okay, but nothing has really changed. You still calculate whatever you want, you'll get infinity. Okay, because just redefining things cannot um, cannot help. So we'll see how to get finite answers in the next video. But here I want to also bring your attention to the fact that even though you have several interaction terms in this section, like um, this phi to the four term and this this interaction term which has del mu phi r del mu phi r uh, coupling and this this phi r square and phi r four these coupling constants are not independent okay they are not all different right they are not all independent they all are completely determined in terms of lambda r and mr okay so uh, because you know long back i was telling that whenever you write a interaction term in the lagrangian you have to include a uh, coupling constant and these coupling constants are independent of each other in general unless certain symmetries force them to be related they are independent and here you see that it is just because we have rewritten things in certain way that is why these couplings are still you know are um, given by these two coupling constants lambda r and mr the number of coupling constants has not changed it's uh, it's the same theory okay so uh, all this algebra will be very useful all this um, calculation will be very useful now in setting up uh, the procedure to get finite answers okay and that is what we will take up next